Welcome! Today we're going to talk about this lovely 2019 Tesla Model 3 uh, long range dual motor that we have for sale. One amazing battery electric vehicle. I have a Tesla myself. I have a 2019 uh, Standard Range Plus. Similar to this, but this one has a bigger battery and all wheel drive. So in some ways it is superior to mine, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's okay, I still love mine. So it's a dual motor. It has a motor in the front and a motor in the back making it all wheel drive. Also making it very fast, it's like having two engines. And on top of that, this one has some extra software. Uh, we, all, we have the amazing autopilot, which I'll talk to you and maybe show you on a little spin around the block. But this one has the acceleration boost upgrade. This is a $2,000 software update. You just uh, you know buy it over uh, on your phone. Uh, through the Tesla app, you get a software update and boom, your car is a lot faster. 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. I think normally it's in the four second range. So it drops to 0 to 60 about a second. And I can tell you, it's a uh, big difference. I've driven a lot of these Teslas with the acceleration boost and a lot of them without it. And I can tell you, it's a riot. 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds is very fast. You're gonna be faster than most of the vehicles on the road. They actually, uh, someone did a dyno test on a Model Y, which is basically the same you know, drive units and battery as a Model 3. And uh, he dynoed it uh, before the software update, and then he did the software update, and then had it dynoed again, and it added about 100 horsepower. So basically, it puts the horsepower somewhat on par to what you get with the uh, Model 3 performance, but you just don't get the top speed, you know, the bigger brakes, you know, suspension and stuff as the Model 3 performance. But you get uh, most of the acceleration, you know, up to 100 miles per hour you're gonna be pretty close to what the acceleration you get from the Model 3 performance. And how many of us go over 100 miles per hour? Probably not too many, <laughs> at least for very long. We have this huge screen. The majority of the functionality is in the screen, um, allowing for it to be infinitely uh, reconfigurable. We're constantly getting uh, software updates for the Model 3 where it's adding features. It's, it's adding you know new things like Disney Plus, uh, Twitch, actually, sorry, not Twitch. Yeah, Twitch, TikTok. They're constantly adding video games, adding uh, features in the toy box. With the software updates, we saw the introduction of uh, blind spot cameras. Um, so the, the vehicle is constantly improving. It's constantly uh, getting better. Pretty much every month or two, it's getting a software update, making it safer and making it better. So even though this is a car that can get older in a lot of ways, it gets better, kind of like your iPhone. You don't have to have the latest iPhone to run the latest iOS. If you look at a 2023 Tesla, uh, the screen and functionality is very similar. Uh, so you don't feel like you're losing too much versus a newer Tesla. So this is great information if you're considering this, you know, pre-owned Model 3 or just adrenal information about buying an older Model 3 if you can't quite budget a brand new one. Uh, this might be some helpful information to you. So we also have the uh, premium white interior. Um, really looks beautiful. Uh, sometimes people might be a little bit averse to the white interior with kids, but um, if you're good at, you know, keeping yourself clean or <laughs> keeping your cars clean, um, it's definitely brighter and happier in here. And uh, these uh, seats are very durable. They're very stain repellent. Obviously, you know, it's not going to get rid of everything, but Tesla actually makes their own seats in-house. They have this proprietary material, unlike anyone else has, that does a really good job repelling stains and stuff like that. And these are very comfortable zero-G seats, so there's no pressure points. All right, let's keep this video rolling along. <laughs> the Model 3 is a uh, compact sedan, about slimmer in size to, uh, I would say, the uh, BMW 3 Series, Mercedes-Benz C-Class. But since we're not hampered by the traditional uh, building process of an internal combustion uh, vehicle of an engine and exhaust system, a gas tank, it allows us to more efficiently package the Model 3. So it generally has more space than a comparable gas car of the similar size. You can see here we have a frunk, more space. It's also a safety feature. You have a crumple zone that's 60% larger uh, than a gas vehicle because there's no engine here. So you have all the space to absorb crash energy in a frontal collision. In fact, when the NHTSA first tested the Model 3, it pretty much excelled in every metric. So according to the NHTSA, the Model 3 uh, is the safest vehicle on the road, the lowest probability of injury out of any other vehicle they have ever tested. So not as, only is this one of the most technologically advanced vehicles on the road, one of the fastest, but it's also one of the safest. So uh, that alone is a big reason for people making a purchase, especially if you have precious cargo. When I'm in my Tesla, I love my Tesla, 
you know, I love driving it and stuff like that. But the other thing I can have peace in my knowing is if I do get in an accident, my family has the greatest chance of not, you know, having severe injuries in, a, in an accident. And I know that's important to a lot of us. So also uh, with the trunk, you have a pretty large trunk. I'd say larger than a conventional uh, gas power vehicle, but if you look under here, we even have more storage. Normally there'd be a gas tank and exhaust system, but since this is an EV, we have more space. And not all EVs are created equal. There's a lot of EVs that I think that uh, missed out on the opportunity to make more space. Uh, there's plenty of EVs, you know, like the Bolt to name a few and the ID4. They could have a frunk, but they just have all this space to put, you know, maintenance and access ports and things like that. But obviously, I think that's a missed opportunity because uh, it can be very helpful in a lot of situations. All right, let's get behind the wheel and take it for a spin. Okay, we're behind the wheel of this 2019 Tesla Model 3 dual motor long range. So uh, for a little while, they had uh, rear wheel drive versions of the long range Tesla uh, from the onset of the uh, Model 3 product in the 2017 model year. And in 2019, the rear-wheel drive versions slowly got to get phased out. I think we've only had one 2019 rear-wheel drive long-range Tesla. So most of the long ranges you'll find will be a dual motor one like this. So in uh, wet slippery conditions, in the snow, it's gonna be a little bit better, or in some cases a lot better than just rear-wheel drive. Beautiful day today. It's October 12th, but 66 degrees out and we have a gorgeous day today. So, um, let's talk about the range for a little bit until we get in the road and test out the acceleration. So the EPA range on this Model 3 is 310 miles. But that can be a little bit deceiving because uh, in reality, you're never going to get 310 miles of range uh, on a Tesla. You just kind of have to get it past us where a Tesla and a lot of other EVs are, can be overly optimistic about... Uh, the ranges, uh, some conditions that you can get close to those ranges, but in most conditions, when you have to use air conditioning and heat and stuff like that, listen to the radio, um, you're not gonna get those fully advertised EPA ranges. We also deal with battery degradation. So a battery, uh, and a, this Tesla will probably last 10 to 20 years, 200, 300, maybe 400 or even 500,000 miles. There are plenty of examples of older Teslas with a lot of miles on them. But you are going to experience battery degradation, so it's going to be about a half percent to a percent a year. So, you know, your fully charged range after three or four years is not going to be what it was when it was brand new. So we have this uh, thing right here to control the state of charge. So uh, with lithium-ion batteries, it's a different case with Tesla's equipped with uh, LFP batteries. Tesla also uses LFP batteries, which stands for lithium-iron like uh, like a metal iron, <laughs> not ion, lithium iron phosphate batteries, LFP. They're not as energy dense as lithium ion batteries, uh, but they're cheaper to produce and they don't use rare earth materials like cobalt, which I know some people are worried about. Um, so Tesla puts these LFP batteries in their rear wheel drive uh, Model 3, their base Model 3, and they put it in, they have a new base model uh, Model Y, which they also put it in. Uh, so you don't get as good performance. So uh, batteries are kind of like uh, an engine in a car. You can have the performance engine, which are like the lithium ion batteries, or you can have the economy engine, which is kind of more like the LFP batteries. But the one thing about LFP batteries, they like to be charged to 100%. Uh, so you can get, you know, so uh, Tesla's equipped with LFP batteries, you can take advantage of more of the full EPA range of those vehicles. But this Tesla has lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries, uh, for every once in a while, for road trips, it's perfectly fine to charge them to 100%, but for daily use, Tesla recommends you charge it to 80% just for the long life and happy and healthiness of the lithium ion batteries. So charging it to 80% is gonna give you probably about 250 miles of uh, usable range. Um, and it could, you know, be that more like 200 miles or 220 miles if you're dealing with really cold or really hot conditions where you have to run the AC hot or cold. So right now, uh, we're charged to about 75% uh, and it's showing about 197 miles of range. And you can also change the display. Some people realize that, uh, you know, I'm not going to always get the full range out of my e EV. So what some people do, instead of just putting uh, miles 
or sorry, uh, instead of putting distance for range, they just put percentage, 70%. So it's kind of like your cell phone. They're like, oh, you know, I'm at 20%. I need to go charge versus, you know, 30 or 50 miles. So that's what some people do. Um, so, you know, we kind of have to get past that with EVs that, you know, it might not get the fully advertised range, but honestly, you know, for daily use, you know, most people aren't going to drive 200 miles. I'd drive maybe like 30, 40 miles a day. So, you know, my Tesla, you know, Model 3 standard range plus has even less range than this. It's 240 miles EPA rating. So I have a far, far less range. Uh, than this does but I rarely even come close to having to think about charging and on top of that you have the amazing supercharging network uh, to you know you can find uh, chargers everywhere see there look at all these chargers close to us right now so um, as a trip planner we got a green light so let's test out this acceleration boost here we go we <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's uh it's like your own personal roller coaster I'm a car enthusiast. I love uh, all cars. You know, I was just recently driving a Mustang Shelby with 660 horsepower, supercharged V8. That's fun too, but this is a more usable power. That's rear wheel drive and can be kind of dangerous and you can't use that power in wet slippery conditions with all wheel drive. I mean, it, even if it was wet, you still have a lot of performance. And it's that instant throttle response. An engine sometimes has to, you know, have a if you slam the throttle right now, the uh, gas engine's gonna have to downshift and rev, and with this, you just hit the throttle, boom, and you just take right off. It's instantaneous thrust, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, gas cars, I love driving a V8 performance car over manual transmission, that's a lot of fun. But I can tell you too, this is like a giant slot car. It's a point and shoot high performance car. Zero to 63.7 seconds, you just point it, mash the throttle, and you're just pushed right back in the seat. That's a lot of fun too. <laughs> All right, since we got that out of the way. So I talked about range and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you just kind of have to get past the fact that Tesla's aren't gonna always do the advertised range. But uh, once you get past that, it's a lot of fun. It's an amazing vehicle. And then you have a trip planner. So you have this amazing supercharging network that will figure it out. Like we have 195 miles of range not enough to make it to Spokane, but if I put Spokane in there, it'll plan the whole trip for me. It'll tell me where to charge, how long to charge for, how much range I'll have when I arrive in Spokane. So that takes the range anxiety out of, uh, you know, road tripping. So I'll have to charge one time in Ellensburg, um, and then I'll make it to Spokane. And honestly, <laughs> what is it, 250 miles to Spokane? Uh, you know, you're not going to want to drive the whole 250 miles in one shot. You're going to want to get out, take a, a pee break, get some food, get a coffee, let, take your dog for a walk, get some fresh air. And usually the Tesla uh, superchargers, they're placed in areas where, you know, there's a mall, coffee shop, restaurants and stuff like that. They're strategically placed. All right, I'll cancel that because we're not going to go to Spokane right now. And lastly, let's talk about uh, autopilot. So a lot of people ask me about enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. My Tesla has full self-driving, it's amazing, but I don't think people understand it's in beta and it can be herky-jerky, it can be wacky, it can be scary sometimes if you're not used to it. And I don't think it is for everybody. But autopilot is uh, what we call a traffic aware cruise control. It allows the vehicle to brake and accelerate in its own lane and steer in its own lane. Um, and you can use it on regular roads like this. There's a lot of uh, ADAS systems, you'll probably hear this term acronym of more and more, EDAS stands for Advanced Driver's Assistance Systems. Uh, but these ADAS systems are becoming more prevalent and I think Autopilot's one of the best ones. And some, a lot of them are only, you're only allowed to use them on highways and stuff like that, but the Autopilot, just as long as there's lines in the road, it, you can put it on. So I have it on right now, I have it set at 30 miles an hour, and um, it will do a pretty good job following the bends on the road. You can get a lot of mileage out of Autopilot. It'll do a pretty good job following the bends in the road and stuff like that. It's not going to take hairpin corners, you know, corners that you're going to have to slow down significantly for. It's not going to do that for. So you kind of have to do that yourself. But in stop and go traffic, you can get a lot of mileage out of autopilot, especially on the highway. Um, you know, you have to keep your hand in the wheel. You have to pay attention. But it's taking the workload of driving off. You see, it's doing a pretty good job staying in this lane. It's not going to stop for stop signs or red lights. It was warning me. Uh, you know, that's what you're gonna have to get full self-driving if you're gonna want it to stop for stop signs. But you know, it does a pretty good job. 
And you just uh, get it pointed and then you put it on again. So you uh, push this uh, stock down twice to activate it. Use this uh, scroll wheel here to adjust how fast you're going. Um, and then you can push the scroll wheel to the left and right to adjust the falling distance, how closely it will fall below the vehicle in front of you. So that's the amazing autopilot. I use it all the time. In fact, I'm so spoiled by these Teslas. If I have to run any errands for the dealership, if I'm not taking my own uh, Tesla, I'll take one of the dealerships. In fact, when we had to go pick up that <laughs> GT Shelby GT500 I was talking to you about, uh, I had to go drop off an employee in Bremerton to pick it up. I took this Tesla, this very one. And it was rainy and cold, so <laughs> I was having a lot more fun driving this than the person having to drive back the 660 horsepower Mustang because it was too cold and rainy to drive it fast because that thing is downright scary <laughs> in wet conditions. It's scary in the dry like this. So if you have to drive on highways for any point of time, you're going to be so spoiled by autopilot that you're not going to want to drive anything else. Maybe you'll want enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. And if you do want to try out those features, you can subscribe to them. I think full self-driving is like $200 a month. Enhanced Autopilot is $100. Or if you want to buy it, it's $12,000. It's a lot of money right now. But if Tesla does, you know, if Tesla does solve the full self-driving, um, I think uh, the software will be worth a lot more than $12,000 because you have a vehicle that can go out there and be a robo-taxi for you and make money while you're at work and stuff like that. And just as long as there's vehicles stopping in front of you, the autopilot will move with the flow of traffic. See, it's slowing down right here. And it's also telling me to, you know, jiggle the wheel a little bit. That's what we call a nag. So it's just telling me, hey, show me you're paying attention. Just jiggle the wheel a little bit. Just to show me you're paying attention. You're not reading a book or you're going to make a tussle the next news story in the six o'clock news because you crash into a, a parked, you know, police car on the side of the road because you're not paying attention. <laughs> there's actually a camera right here. Um, and it does monitor you. So if I start on, on my if I start messing with the screen too much changing the radio stations It'll give me a hey, you know pay attention It can be annoying, but you know, like I said uh, It can also be a good thing because we we want to keep these systems We don't want people to misuse these systems where it spoils the fun for everyone and the government bans them or you know makes Tesla you know cripple the software and make it a, a lot less useful than it is um, and uh, it saves a lot of lives. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the crash statistics, let's see how it does in this curve right here. Uh, it actually did a pretty good job uh, staying in the line. But the statistic right now, uh, uh, cars driving an autopilot average about one accident for every four million miles driven. So uh, the statistics show that autopilot doesn't make uh, the cars more unsafe it makes them significantly safer so there's two levels of safety on the tesla the way it's built obviously the safest vehicle ever tested by the nhtsa right that makes it safe but on top of that the amazing autopilot software makes it safe as well because you know you have one accident for every four mile, million miles driven and if you do get into an accident you're uh you know you have the lowest probability of injury versus any other vehicle so two levels of safety all right well that's enough of our fun today in this model 3 uh all-wheel drive with the acceleration boost hopefully it was informative for you regardless if you're looking at this specific one or teslas in general thanks for watching hope to see you soon and have a wonderful day